everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage with another live video on Facebook, YouTube, and at Eastwood.com. Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube, and also click the bell icon when you subscribe on YouTube so you're notified of all of our live videos. If you have any questions, Scotty C is over here answering questions again today. How's it going, Scott? Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know, just looking over at the person talking to me. <laughs> so, hi, how are you doing today, Scott? Not too bad. It's a beautiful day in Pennsylvania. Do you expect to get a lot of uh, Shears question? I don't know. We'll see. Do you see have you a guys... favorite shear Shears? Not really. I mean, uh, those are I mean, well, those are. Well, guess probably... what? After today, you will. <laughs> favorite. Your favorite shears are going to be the Eastwood Electric Shears. Uh, I use them all the time. They are great. So we've got Matt here today, and he's going to demonstrate them. And um, I guess I'll turn it over to you. I'm going to go see what Scotty's up to. Make sure he's answering questions properly. All right. Cool. I'm going to get out of here. So today we're going to talk about. Uh, we call it one of our customer favorites. So this is the, uh, the Eastwood Electric Shear. Um, the Shear is, it, we've had it quite a while. It's very powerful actually. Uh, we rate this up to 18 gauge steel. Um, I've even pushed a little beyond that uh, when I was in a pinch. Uh, but what this does, this allows you to cut sheet metal uh, in straight and, uh, and gentle curves and it will not distort the metal. And uh, also, you're not putting heat into it like if you were using a cutoff grinder or something like that. Uh, the way it works is it has some uh, jaws in here with the center section of the jaw actually moves up and down. Joe's going to get in here nice and tight on my jaws. Really? So, and you can watch as, you're, as that's moving, going up and down and it actually takes like a nibble out of the uh, out of the center there. So it does lose about a 3 uh, Poor strip of metal comes out but it rolls uh, with it uh, which is nice. And I'll show you guys actually taking a piece off here. So if you're cutting a line there's a couple ways you can do it. It's kind of like our bead roller. Uh, if you're trying to cut a line, cut or follow a line you can pick a side here uh, depending on what you're doing. So you do have to remember that it takes a strip out here so if we're cutting this piece off and we want to keep this half here, I would not want to cut this way because it's actually going to take a strip out and it's going to be about the, the width of the jaws short. So we'd actually want to be cutting on this side of the line here because this is our waste material. So you can see when you go to cut, it actually puts a little piece out and it'll start curling along. And what I usually do is I'll, I'll, after I get that first piece section cut, um, I'll turn that out of the way a little bit so it doesn't catch and then you can just basically run along the line. You can see it cuts that little bit out. That's the section it's taking and it does have a variable trigger so we can actually run this at a slow speed if we want and just take a little nibble or we can speed it up. And cut it off. So that's our waste material here that is cut off. And as you can see, the metal has no distortion to it. So if we were trying to cut this uh, with a different type of tool, it may cause some distortion here. And it leaves a nice uh, flat cut on the panel uh, that we could just sand and weld. So that's for doing straight cuts on this. And it does have replaceable jaws. So if you guys wear them out over time, they do wear out. We have the replace, replaceable jaw set here. And these are super simple. I'll turn them here so you guys can see. There you go, Joe. So to swap these out, it's really, really simple. You can take the tool, and all it is is there's two Allen bolts uh, right here and here. And we can take them out with the Allen wrench, pop them out, you put the bolts back through, and you're ready to go. The other cool thing about this tool, uh, which I use a lot, is if you need to actually cut uh, rusty sheet metal or if you're doing a patch panel or something, you need to cut a big, a big piece of metal off of uh, a panel, and again, you don't want to use a plasma cutter or you don't want to use uh, a cutoff grinder, the head of this actually rotates so we can loosen with the Allen bolt here, um, or the Allen wrench rather, we can loosen this, and now we can turn, uh, rotate the head of the, of the jaws so that we can cut to make it more comfortable. So um, turn it like this. And all you do is fit this back in and just snug it up just so it doesn't rotate on you. 
and we can make another cut just like that. So depending on what, you're, what position you're in, you can make a cut like that. And it's good for getting it out of the way if you're trying to get, uh, if you're cutting something where you might be uh, interfering with a part of the car, or you're getting in a tight area, you can turn the head like that and make a cut, which is really nice. Any questions we got along the way? Uh, yeah, one of the ones we have right now, if you could go over, I know you had it in the beginning, but if you're just tuning in, uh, they asked, you know, how do you control, you know, so you don't waste any material, you don't cut into the area that you're looking to actually use? Uh, yeah, so you, basically when you draw a line, you want to you pick a side of the jaws um, that you're cutting on. So I'll just make another line just to show you guys. So for anybody that might have missed it, if we want to keep, if this is the section right here that we want to keep, but we want to, that's our waste material there. Uh, and we're, we're going to say that this piece here is a patch panel where it needs to be exactly that size. What you do is you want to take your, your tool here, and if we were on the inside here, it's taking away the width of the jaws, basically, or just a little less than the width of the jaws, the opening here. So if we have it on this side of the line here, this is our area we want to keep. So we're going to actually be, our cut's going to be right about there, which we do not want. We're going to be losing uh, the width of the jaws there when we cut. So what you want to do is actually go to the other side of the Sharpie line and put the other side of the jaw on. So now when we're cutting, all we're doing is reducing the amount of uh, waste material that's being cut off, which isn't a big deal, obviously. So you can follow this line and cut right on there instead of going over on the other side and cutting it off. So it's just a matter of planning when you're, uh, when you're cutting on this or just taking that extra second to kind of think right before you cut uh, so you don't waste a piece of uh, sheet metal because it does get expensive. Uh, good question though. So curves on this tool, it does cut gentle curves. Um, but you cannot cut like a 90 degree cut or something like that. If you want to cut a little tighter of a, of a radius, we have our throatless style metal shears, uh, electric uh, shears that we've come out with recently, which are pretty handy. These are a little bit different shape, but this allows you if I turn them a little bit so you guys can see. So with this design, it's like our throatless shear, our bench top throatless shear with a handle. This allows you to cut a little tighter corners uh, because it's not taking that material out of the center there. So that's a, that's a little different, but it does not have the rotating head. Uh, so it doesn't, you can't get into as, as tight of areas or it may not be work as well for doing on vehicle cutting. Uh, but if you need to cut tighter corners, you can with that one right there. We recently came out with that one. Uh, this one has been out for quite a while and is, a lot of guys have this in their shop already. So I'll do a little cut. So when you're cutting this, try and cut a curve. I'm just I'm putting a little pressure on my, on my wrist to curve. So we can make a gentle curve in a panel. And again, key thing is no distortion. So we're not getting any wave in this metal here. We're not going to have to hammer and dolly that flat to try and get it to match up to another piece, uh, which, you know, if you're doing a patch panel, you definitely do not want. So it can cut curves, but anything beyond that kind of uh, radius uh, is you're going to have to make a couple of cuts. A little tip you can do is you can take this, if you need to make a tighter cut, and this is the only tool that you have to make it, uh, what you can do is take multiple cuts. So if we needed to make something that was sharp like this here, uh, we, could make, we could make the cut until the tool couldn't go anymore. And then what I would do is come off like that, and then I would come back and make the cut and then make the cut again. So you can do it. It's just a couple extra cuts. If you, wanted, if you do want to use this tool, um, that, that's a way that you can get it done. Any other questions that we have today about the... The only other one is, is um, you know, what the gauge can this cut through? And sure. I'm going to reach one. Yeah, as mentioned, we, we do rate this up to 18-gauge steel, this particular tool. 
Um, this is a tool that I always say I think we actually underrate a little bit, but I've cut a little thicker when I've been in a pinch um, and it has had no issue, but you may, your, your blade life may be reduced. But 18 gauge steel, you can use this thing you know, all day long, 18 gauge steel, no problem. It's gonna cut through it like butter and you can cut straight lines, curves. Um, you, you can, can cut, cut a whole old, I mean, you can cut, oh, I, I've used them to cut old rusty sheet metal, cutting apart panels. Yeah. And I mean, I've said it before, I bought extra jaws because I thought that would really wear them out quick and Hasn't gone yeah, through. I still have the jaws laying around. I haven't bothered to install them. So not only clean metal, but I've cut some rusty stuff yeah, too. Yeah, they, they do not like welds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Don't try and cut through a spot welded panel. That's what I've wrecked my jaws is you didn't realize the panel had a spot weld or something and you go over it. That's harder than obviously the sheet metal. Yeah. And you're going to break them or, or uh, put a little chip in them and then they, they need to be replaced, unfortunately. So we do have the, the extra jaws available. It's not bad to stock up on them just to have them in the drawer. So if you do have uh, something where you accidentally cut incorrectly and something happens, you can just throw them right on there. So that's all we have for questions today. Man, I must have described it good. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Um, we do uh, our live broadcast here in the Eastwood Garage, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you guys have any ideas for future broadcasts, uh, make sure you drop us a line in the comments. And we'll do our best to do one on uh, one of those topics in the future. All right. Thanks, guy. Appreci appreciate it. I'll catch you later.